Spoilers ahead, fuck nuts. I've been waiting 40 years for this. They called themselves Ghostbusters. According to these hacks, they saved the world. No eyewitnesses. And who is found to carry the torch? Descendants of Egon Spengler. You have a miner hanging out the side of a moving vehicle, firing a laser gun indiscriminately. Has a proton pack. It's completely safe. I wouldn't say completely safe. The Ghostbusters are finished. Right. Well, overruled. Sustained. Thank you. You the weird guy who buys strange old things? Correct on both counts. Buddy, you just hit the jackpot. What is it? Better question is, what's inside of it? The parables tell of an unimaginable evil commanding an army of ghosts. With the power to kill by fear itself. Like, literally scared to death? We might be looking at a second ice age. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Let's get to work. Can I be of any help? Melnitz in uniform! Yes! If there's something strange, if there's something weird, who are people gonna call? Ghostbusters, what do you want? We're the Ghostbusters. Can I tell you something else? What? Buster makes me feel mm -hmm. good. It makes me feel good. Heads up. It's all dark and horny at 12 o'clock. Welcome, Pose. Welcome. We're back with another spoiled this episode, this time for the new Ghostbusters film, Frozen Empire. Yes. And uh, this one is kind of, I think, like a sequel to basically what is seeming to be shaping up to be a new trilogy, uh, possibly. Possibly, yes. But basically, it's a, mainly a new cast we <clears throat> have here. Uh, that's returning from the first of these, which was Afterlife, Ghostbusters Afterlife. And it's uh, Paul Rudd, um, Carrie Coon. Uh, and then you have like Finn Wolfhard from Stranger Things, McKenna Grace, uh, and Celeste O'Connor, and Logan Kim. Those actors are returning from the previous fir first film, Afterlife. But then we also have uh, the original trilogy yeah, characters yeah, the original cast or not trilogy the original two characters of dan Aykroyd and bill murray and ernie hudson there you go was, but that's not that's a trilogy yeah no 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 but uh with the because how the first one just had two yeah yeah oh yeah the two like, that were pretending. yeah 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 i don't know for some reason i was just thinking that in my mind i was like it's a trilogy no it's not a trilogy <laughs> no, no no i meant a trilogy of the cast you said a double <laughs> no i'm saying i think it should have been a trilogy in my mind but then i'm like no it's not but maybe it's because that video game because uh, that was that had the original actors in it and stuff i feel like that like tricks my brain sometimes because that is kind of like a third movie i wish it was <laughs> It's a lot of fun for people who haven't seen it, but mm -hmm. it's actually canon to the the movies and everything it makes sense. too. Yeah, yeah. But anyway. so yeah, we have a, a good mix of the old and the new with this one. Kind of like the last one, but it was more of a cameo in in the last one, I yeah. would say. Yeah, yeah. And here they they actually serve uh, more of a role, and I, mm -hmm. I guess to kind of get into the the plot before we really get into our reviews, basically this one. Brings the the Ghostbusters back to uh, New York because the last one was in Oklahoma, and it's uh those characters, uh, Carrie Coon's character and Paul Rudd's character and the <clears throat> kids, and their names are Callie and Gary. Uh, they basically they're kind of like really poor. I feel like they've insinuated with like both these movies, like they kind of just like go from place to place pretty much. 
Because remember they moved into the house in the Oklahoma one because it was basically like, yeah, they left it to us. Yeah, like, man, I mean, we need a place to go. I mean, makes sense to me, right? But so they they move into the, they're living in the firehouse now. Yep, the original the original firehouse from the old movies. Yep. And uh, basically, they're just the Ghostbusters now, the two kids and and uh, the parents. Yep. Or the step, the new Mom, stepdad. The stepdad. And... Step teacher, as he described it. <laughs> uh, then the brother and sister combo. Yeah. And uh, of course, also working with the, the other fellas, like Ernie basically is there, in, the guy who pays for everything, mm-hmm. or Ernie's character. Uh, uh, he basically pays for everything. Uh, he also has a lab and stuff that he gets the other some other people that we rec- I think that one chick from the uh who's like the brother's love interest in the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in how she... she's working for the the like development company, the Ghostbusters yeah. like development company now. Didn't even bother telling him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got I a know, new right? lab of stuff to put this what? <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was like figuring they were going to have like a romantic plot there or something. And mm-hmm. then I was like, no. They nope, just totally... straight to business. Yeah. <laughs> straight to business other than like you but know, the brother to uh Finn Wolfhard is such a fucking like just kind of a Klebach in these. There's more of a romance he has more of a romance with the fucking ghost in the attic, sli- <laughs> the slimer up there than the actual chi- than that chick that he actually likes. And I like that actor, but like and I and I even like him in this, but he very has like very low function in this movie, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, he's not. He, really he's basically a, a B plot. Yeah. He's basically a very much a B plot character who just shows up when it's convenient. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> basically, it's about like, uh, so Kamal Nanjani's in this movie, and he basically brings this like orb to Dan Aykroyd's uh, character Ray. He runs like an occult bookstore now. It's a it's a store of, full of art, supernatural artifacts and stuff like that. He's mm. one by. He even has a podcast that, or, that he's working with. Uh, that uh, other kid that was from the podcast, rich- yeah, yeah, it was, literally was it was his name like, literally yeah. just podcast? Wow, fucking. <laughs> but uh, that the, he's working with that kid basically that to start weird. his own little show where they detect like super- that kid's a little psychopath from this one. Funny enough, I still I like him. I <laughs> do too, but like <laughs> at, at least he's <laughs> especially because like I feel like some of the better moments with like McKenna Grace's character, who I liked in the first one, but we kind of talked about here was kind of. A little bit more cringy, like her character here. Oh, Phoebe, the Phoebe, the Phoebe uh, character. Yeah, yeah. Because they kind of, like you said, like <clears throat> she's supposed to be like the smartest, but she makes the do- all the yeah. worst and, and granted, decisions. like they're trying to do that thing of like she's a teenager, right? And like teenagers make dumb decisions, but it's just like yeah, but she's like but she's proven... always making fun of that, like how she's not like other teenagers. You know, yeah, she's literally the one complaining. I'm better. Yeah. I'm better than other teenagers. <laughs> I'm smarter. I'm better. So. <laughs> And, but then she proceeds to do the worst, stupidest decisions. Yeah. Uh, proceeds to be, I think, I would say, kind of the worst character in this, where because those stupidest decisions that she she just makes such dumb, dumb things. And fuck I remember, it, you, hey. you just during the movie, like oh, oh, like, I just, like God, heard you. I was this like, is yeah, why you don't, you're not on the team. Them. <laughs> yeah, the, the fucking mayor's like, oh, she can't be on a team. She can't be the Ghostbuster because she's a minor. I'm like. Okay, that kind of makes sense. No one really thought of that. <laughs> and I'm like, well, fuck. Out of all the things he was bitching them about, it, that kind of makes the most sense. That's somewhat valid. That's yeah. the only real valid thing the mayor had going. <laughs> but then it turns into that, like, you know, typical cringy, oh, I'm too young to do anything story, you know, like plot. And you're like, mm. oh, God. Yeah, she's just. Nah. You no, know, she's going to prove herself in the end. And it's prove herself. Kinda... Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> no, but like, you know, they're going to follow that even if it's not earned. Yeah, I know. It is not earned. Yeah. It, honestly, she's the one who started, who caused so much of this stuff. I'm like, not all the issues, it's but she caused a lot of these It's basically her and Kumal character's fault. Hmm? It's basically her fault and Kumal Nanjani's character's fault. <laughs> he's just a, he's, I'm, I'm granted, he's just who's, kind of the guy who's very, just trying to pawn he's, stuff. He's like one of the best characters in this movie, I think. I don't even, I wouldn't blame him for really his much. Nadeem, his name honest. was Nadim in this. Like, I wouldn't blame him really for much other than just selling some stuff he didn't give a shit mm. about, which some people are like that. I, I wouldn't blame him. I'm saying that makes, he's just a guy who doesn't really understand half the shit yeah. that happened. So he's like, ah. Uh, I mean, my grandma didn't really get along. I didn't really listen to her. <laughs> nah, thanks, bud. <laughs> it's like, no, he's great. You're such this. a great grandson. He's great in this movie. <laughs> I love him in it. But it is like, if it's anyone's fault, 
it's that because they were like she might have even told you this shit. You probably just weren't listening. He's like, yeah, no, that is possible. Like, I mean, he acknowledges <laughs> at least. And to be honest, yeah, I didn't deny it. I mean, it's it's, like, it's one of those typical things of who the fuck? Why would you fuck? Would you believe your old grandma about talking probably about some weird superstition stuff? I just feel like since it was PG thirteen, they didn't go there. But I just got this implication he was like a massive stoner. <laughs> I think he's just a dropout. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just one, or he's just one of those uh, stereotypical. It's like his. It's like, yeah, my grandma basically said I had no drive. I'm lazy as fuck. I don't do anything. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you know what? Fuck her. I'm selling all her shit to this guy. Technically, it would have been a like, fine enough if you know Phoebe didn't fucking do fuck up during this for mm. s- the stupidest reason. Oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, anyway. so I guess since we're already kind of going into it, I guess we can go through like our negatives kind of first. You want to start with negatives? Sure. Okay. Uh, cringy Phoebe. Phoebe the whole time. Even with the weird, I don't know, relationship she has with the ghost friend. Mm. Kind of cringy. Very annoying. What's and it? it's not really built on. Fr- like, it's a, f- I don't know, like friendship, but for some reason they also seem to kind of be going towards a romance type mm. of thing. Oh, totally. I think that was, I think we all got that implication yeah. from seeing it today. And to be honest, it's like not really built upon. So it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. It, it doesn't seemed like Hollywood kind of just doing their usual thing where they just try to pat themselves on the back and be like, well guys, we did it, but we didn't really. They're gay, it. but not really. Yeah, gay. exactly. Which I gives a fuck at that point. But I'm like, at this point, it's more of the, for me that bugged me. It was just like, there's no real chemistry between them other than playing chess. And then after that chess session, she seems to fucking, like, be so, co- like, connect to her like a fucking stray mm. dog. Fucking just following her, following her, or wanting her around every t- where she goes. Oh, I yeah. liked her. It was just kind of unfortunate that it kind of just went in so many generic kind of things that we've seen in movies before. Yeah, and it just fucking drags down the plot a lot. It does. When they- it's so strong otherwise... I think it's just like one of those things where because it's so generic, it's kind of just like, oh, come on, guys, you could have written this better. Like, I thought they should have just been friends. Yeah. But it seemed like there was this whole, like, will they, won't they kind of thing like, to it. They the, have so it little on. chemistry. My, it, it it would make sense to be friends, but they're like, it's exactly. A, it's, it's, a, I didn't it's get a any cringy chemistry. love at first sight you see from a lot of fucking movies that don't really make mm-hmm. sense because they don't really build on the relationship. Yeah. And it's even more, it's probably even more prevalent or more there in this movie than like most of most of the other movies mm. it gets yeah so i sense no really chemistry annoying. between them besides maybe a friendship but even that well, other than them like they're both smart essentially they're just bonding over the fact that this other chick's smart too and mm. they're she bonds over to go there's okay and that leads to one of the stupidest fucking decisions i've seen from this fucking bitch <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking just because she wants this this uh fucking ghost ussy apparently and she's like i want to be a ghost too i'll be i'll turn myself into a ghost for 10 for two minutes with this device that nobody really knows would really happen if i used on a real person yeah. it's very experimental so i say it just goes in the generic territories where of course she's gonna do the stupid immature thing that like she should know better not to do yes of course the love interest is gonna betray them Shocker. of course fucking in the end they're gonna go Oh, okay. I actually am on your side. Rede- like, redemption yeah, arc. Redemption. God damn it. From just lighting a match. Uh, That's all she did too. She didn't even do much else of a redemption. Just lit a match, just so the uh, the firemaster guy uh, guy could use the fire fucking from the match. To we see this in so many things thing. though. Fight the ghost. And it wasn't done terribly here, but it's just it's that it's generic. It's just very it's like just shit. It's just a shitty fucking plot. They didn't. They didn't even do the generic part good. Uh huh. It's just the crap it's a shitty fucking plot and it drags a shit ton of the movie down i think it does especially and then like all that it I, almost just seems like a separate movie kind of in a way yeah it, it honestly that they focused way too much i was more interested in the ghost in the uh, slimer in the attic <laughs> but, <laughs> the love story between him and yes fucking, the brother and slimer the real things. true romance of this <laughs> Yeah, oh Stranger Things kid. <laughs> oh, dude, I love that fucking Slimer. God, he slimed me like two times. <laughs> you know, at first I was grossed out, but then I was kind of into it. <laughs> God. <laughs> Slimer comes in and saves the day, too. <laughs> or, it's like Gremlins really 2. S- no, he saves the day. I don't know what to call it. He just eats the possessor ghost. Did you get like a Gremlins vibe here from like the mini, pu- the mini the little, puff? Uh, yeah, yeah, the little mini puff things. They're basically little like 
they're like mini gremlins though. Yeah. It's kind of fun. I mean, like they're they're stupid and goofy, but it's, I don't know. It's it's basically it feels like one of those things that they can definitely market as a plushy. Oh, it's type totally thing. plushy shit. Yeah, yeah, fucking like a plushy or toy or some shit like that. And I think that's some of the complaints I've seen people with these movies, with these two newest ones, Afterlife and this one. This is, I guess, the worst reviewed Ghostbusters movie by critics yet. Really? Oh, well, yeah. by critics? That fuck. Well, what do the critics know? I know, but like, <laughs> and yeah, but like, isn't that interesting? Because like, I'm like, I actually really like this. I thought this to me. Might be like one of the best Ghostbusters movies I've seen, despite that uh, the negatives like we talked about. But it's really just a negative, more like. But it's a big part of the plot, and yeah. they go back to it a lot. So that's unfortunate because it weighs like, it down. They they did throw like elements I would have loved to see more of. Like, I love the horror elements in this. Uh, you mean like the the uh, the bad guy at the end type thing? No, like more just like kind of like the slight horror stuff they did with it within the PG thirteen rating. Like, I mean, they did have a horrifying ghost in that little imprisonment thing. The, I love uh, like the opening, <laughs> like the opening with like how it was in nineteen oh four, and it's like the original fire. Uh, fire oh yeah, the fucking like that was at the firehouse. It's what they called the the Ventures Guild or whatever, and mm. it looked like they had like a fucking Freemason logo in the front of their things. <laughs> and I'm like, oh well, that makes sense. Well, that checks cool. out. <laughs> I like that because it was kind of like. Huh, like this was like the original Ghostbusters experience. With Adventures like Guild. <laughs> yeah. No, no, yeah. those are the people that were uh had took the thing. Yeah, no, they're they remember they talk like granted uh But those were firefighters that broke it that went in there, wasn't it? Yeah, but they were just firefighters. They I know, but they were there was the fire department that the firehouse is based out of that they left. I uh, was it or yeah. was it the uh or was it the free uh, the Adventures Guild place? That uh, it probably is the no, the, it was. The fire did, yeah, it is probably the fireplace. It was. I was like, that oh, that's sense. awesome. Like, yeah, that is a cool little hint, right? Yeah, but the uh, anyway, like the weird free. I'm just gonna call them the Freemason fucks. Mm. It's, I don't know what the instead of Adventures Guild, but um, they basically find the the uh, artifact, uh-huh. cool little artifact, uh, impri- That's and you saw the. Well, I'm guessing is uh, the grandmother of that of the uh, the guy. Who's dressed up in that thing? Who I guess in prison that the creature or the ghost again? Mm. I guess those dumbasses fucking released it for a few set for a fucking few seconds just to freeze them, and then but thankfully they had that chick that the uh, the grandma that was there <laughs> ready to fucking oh shit gotta get him back get him in <laughs> I don't I guess that's how it goes but uh. But anyway, thought, yeah, it is cool little right? hit, little cool thing right there. No, I thought those were like were strong things in the movie. Like it definitely felt really cinematic. Yeah, I mean, like I like like I I was telling you, I like the idea how the lab that they had. I that was, was awesome. Too. I was yeah. I was fucking actually really liking that because it, it, it like, we were talking you, about how you, they you said it felt like a video game. Type yeah, they incorporated of video of game stuff, which I guess shows that's kind of canon now because yeah. they literally have the raise occult books thing in the video game too. Yeah, it's it, I thought it was really sick. Just like the fact that they're taking possessed item or possessed items and they have ghosts and stuff in them, sucking the ghost out and then basically putting into a thing to study so they can find out more about these ghosts. I'm like, okay, that's sick. Mm-hmm. That's cool. They had some horrifying looking ghosts, like that fucking one that was in the dark room that had like the horrifying fucking mouth thing. Yeah. It's like the mouth full of fucking teeth. I'm like, that's horrifying. I'm not going to lie. That's a ghost that would no, terrify it was cool. me. <laughs> that's it was sk- very light, very <laughs> light horror, but I thought like the elements they did kind of have like some slight horror elements there. I was like, it's kind of cool. Like they actually, I think they did it a lot, like very well yeah. because like in the... I think there was a bit more of an emphasis on comedy, at least with the first two. And then the last one was very, like, adventurous. But this one, I feel like, had the right mix of comedy, adventure, and, like, slight horror, too. Mm. I, th- I I just like the expanding of the world type stuff that they also have going on. Yeah, the, the world building. Like, with the... I can't stop gushing over the lab idea. I just love that idea. Mm. <laughs> you, you know, but um, that, the idea that par- the uh, place they've been imprisoning the ghosts essentially are, is getting full. Yeah, the tank. And that's one reason they can't let the fireplace or the firehouse get closed or demolished. Because like they're all just cramped in there. Like, fuck. Oh, f- it's like one of those things. I'm like, I thought it was, they were going with the cartoon route where essentially just throws the ghosts in essentially the hell world they came from or whatever it's like that, it was. It's always Sunny episode when they get stuck in the fucking uh, the water slide. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> they're all just stuck in there. Like, it's too many ghosts. Too many ghosts. <laughs> But um, but uh, the 
Mayor was a was a dickless. absolute dip, yeah dickless. Mayor dickless. Mayor dickless was an he absolute returns and he's shit. mayor now. He was an absolute dipshit. I don't know how he got to be mayor, but another one of those little cliches that also bug me of the uh, oh the mayor or whatever it the person that, sup, you're it higher gener- up. It was generic, but I said at least with that one, I I liked it because even though it was generic, and I can give anyone that says it's that like at least that, I thought it made sense at least because it wasn't like some new villain or something. It was like okay, like I guess at least it's it, not new. It's to established villain. that he hates them. It's just a, it's just them. such a stupid thing that the guy just has like a weird grudge over like Ghostbusters. <laughs> Just in, even though like he's like, oh, the ghosts do exist. They're everywhere. We see. You want to know my? We see them, but you, know, you know what? Theory? Shut it down. <laughs> I think I think he really is dickless, and he they really touched a nerve when he said they said that to him. He's a fucking eunuch, apparently. Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. Dumb fuck. <laughs> he's also he's brainless too. Fuck yeah, he's fucking brainless and dickless. <sighs> How dare they? Oh, <laughs> dumb fuck. But yeah. Uh, yeah, even though his one fucking point of the ch- of Phoebe being a minor was the one thing that made sense out of all of the things he hated them for. Initially, when he said oh. that was like his initial thing, and then he just turned, he kind of just turned on them all over again. Yeah, just- that was like they made that the big thing. <laughs> Property damage, of course, was the big fucking or like the. Oh other, yeah, that's like naming off when they broke. Pro- the, uh, you broke the, all the these lamps at the p- library. That was later, but yeah, I mean, yeah. the beginning too, when he was giving them shit because oh, they were oh, when, the that, dra- when they captured the, the fucking flying ghost dragon. Yeah, no, fuck you, guy, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> oh, people have like recordings of it and shit, and they're trying to give them shit. Yeah, it's it's obvious a real fucking thing. There's literally things everywhere, but he's like, mm, you gotta shut down the Ghostbusters. Sorry, I don't believe it. it's it's like that guy who just you show him something, and he just still refuses to acknowledge it's yeah. real. <laughs> Uh, dude, there's a ghost right there. Mm, I don't think so. Yeah, mm. it's like I was also saying to you. It's like I feel like he just. It's either. Uh, it could be that he also just like doubled down, kind of like when he originally was. He it's like he originally thought they were just a joke, and then realized like, oh shit, these guys are legit. If I say that they like, no, people are gonna think I'm <laughs> stupid for basically saying it's. It's, this, it's like the Simpsons. Oh, are ghosts really real? No, <laughs> they're the ones who are wrong. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> it's oh my god. It's, I I don't know. He's it's just stupid. It's dumb. It's a dumb fuck. But anyway, it's kind of generic. Thankfully, but he's I like, not in it I like too that much. Character. Yeah, like, and he wasn't overused. It, yeah, and it, like you only see him like three parts of the movie. It's the beginning, toward, like they're in that. The middle where it's like the lion scene where they mm. where Phoebe destroys the the library lion. That he keeps complaining. That's the only way I can get we can get kids to read was those that statue. Yeah. It's like, oh. I feel like that, but that's one of those things. Which is kind of stupid like, because it was possessed and everyone saw it. Fucking it's kind moving. of a reliance on nostalgia, but then it also kind of makes sense because, like, like I said about his motivations. Like, if you didn't see the first one, it might seem more generic to someone who hasn't seen the first. But it's, then for a fan, it's partially nostalgia. And it working for you because it's, you know he hates it, you know. It's just fucking, it's... But it's generic and, and he's very one note his role in the movie. This it's, dude was the guy who would let you fucking die just instead of destroying pro, uh, fucking town property. Fuck him. Fuck this asshole. Um, and then he's at the end where everyone's hey, well, calling they, him dickless. Yeah, at least all the was. crowd was fucking... Calling <laughs> him <laughs> dickless. <laughs> fucking... You know, and they, and they use that opportunity like to their advantage. Yeah, like, oh, they, oh, fuck, he's you endorse us, right? <laughs> he, he, the mayor totally endorses us. He's guys. like, fuck you, assholes. Uh, <laughs> God damn it. Anyway, but yeah. So, other than Mayor Dickless and all the, I did like some of the ideas they, of course, had in here. Mm. Um, still weirded out, like when they talked about the brassing. I was telling you about why Phoebe was the only one that got a oh, brass when they realized uh, that brass proton might... pack. Yeah, that did look sick though. It looks. I'm not complaining that it's sick, but I agree with why you. Did, was why it didn't they her all? Who got I thought it. they were all gonna get it. They also remember they also cut these firemen, the brass uh, pole, the fire for, from the fire station to bur- to melt it down and then coat the proton pack in it. Why didn't they do it with all of them? That's just gone now. No, that's not gone. We saw uh, we saw that guy fucking slide down it during a fucking weird mo- during the moment where the bad guy comes in. Remember, uh, what's oh, his yeah. name? The fire master dude. He just comes. How do they do that? I'm not. I don't know. That's a I good think, point. I feel. I think that was a loophole they forgot. <laughs> 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 they forgot. Oh my Fuck, god. Fuck. We forgot. We, we, we cut that. We we supposedly cut this and melted it down. Shit. <laughs> oh it. yeah, we did do that, right? There was Fuck. a second pole. It's a second pole. <laughs> Why didn't they just use the second pole? Why'd they rip down the other? I don't know. <laughs> like, 
like I said, it still doesn't make sense why they only dipped one fucking proton pack yeah, in brass to fucking worn off the thing that was literally being contained by bra- like brass type stuff. Yeah, that's a plot hole like, right there. It was stupid, and it was kind of a stupid move. I'm not gonna lie, but anyway, those little plot. Ghostbusters <laughs> always like I feel like kind of been slightly like B movie ish though, right? Yeah, I mean like it's a, one of those movies that's always been like yeah, a, it's a good watch. It's not. Um, it's not Godfather. It's not no, anything not, like that. No. But it's like some people treat it like it is. Yeah, sometimes. exactly. Some people say it's like the, their favorite film and stuff. And I don't I think mean, it's anywhere not, close to that for me. But I mean, good for them if it's their favorite. But no, exactly. Just good. it's I kind of gotta acknowledge this isn't like exactly something to be deeply thought about. Mm-hmm. But they're fun. Yeah, they're especially fun something movie. like this. Like exactly. it's a good summer kickoff movie. I would say like a good I'm way sorry. to kind of kick off. Is it is it is it, it gets, summer? It gets earlier and is er- it, summer? it always gets earlier and earlier. You know, when it comes to like movies. When the fuck is March? In summer, summer basically. <laughs> it's spring. <laughs> it's like I swear to God, like they basically consider like the summer kickoff in like March or like April now, basically, uh, and it's like the end of March. So. I went dad to some people do that for that, re- but um. It gets earlier and earlier every year. I remember thinking like in the past, like, uh, like May was like early. But yeah. then, like, I swear to God, like, it's, like, oh, they, yeah, March or April now, pretty much. What was good scene? Like, also a lot of the old cast. Or some positive. The it old was. cast did a good job at the... They it did. was a good mix of both of them. The, uh, he had the original three. He had three of uh, the originals. Bill Murray. Yeah, uh, because er, in the Ernie's last one they established... That, I mean, that actor's er, dead. Ernie, Bills, and Ray, who's played by... Oh, uh, Dan Aykroyd. Dan, Dan Aykroyd, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, they had the... Uh, lady that was in the original ones too. She was in it. Yep. The one who was the front desk lady. Yep. Uh, Melnitz. Yeah, Melnitz. Yeah, Mel. Mel. Annie Mel Potts. The, Mel in the outfit. Bill said that was but, cool. Uh, yeah, she was in there. She did a good job too. Yeah, I liked her. Um, even though she's not really in it, it's more she's more of the uh, yeah. Yeah, she. It's uh, it, it really gives uh that slug lady from Monsters Inc. vibes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, out of, all, out, of all the, out of all the old original cast, I would say her and uh, Dickless are the most underutilized. But, like, to honestly, I thought, like, the way they incorporated the new cast and the old cast, I liked, like, kind of pretty much everything they mm. did besides Phoebe in the in the yeah. kind of love interest plot there. What was, uh, what was that other girl's name, the one from the new, the new, the uh, last movie, the, the one that Brother liked that was in uh, this one? Lucky. Lucky? Yeah. Yeah, her. I mean, uh, she. I liked it, but they, she was barely, she was, didn't have many ro- lines, uh, even though I thought she was the one that made the most sense half the time in this. Mm. She's like, she's literally just someone who's I doing her job. she was like, I literally told you, at one point, she's like, I literally told you guys that no one listened to me. <laughs> no like, one listens to me. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like when you go into the, when, when someone tells you something really useful for a boss battle and then yeah. you just try it anyway. And then, yeah, yeah. I told you. I gave you a tip. It's, uh, <laughs> But uh, her, and then who was the scientist? I'm glad that she was good in this, though, because she was one of the actresses that was in Madam Web. Yeah. Oh, was she? Yeah. She was, like, one of the, like... Oh, that poor soul. Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> but, um... <laughs> oh, that poor soul. She she did good in this. Yeah, no, she even, was she, Even though she was, like, this. barely... In, she was, sadly... I kind of wanted to see more of her yeah. in this. Compa- and especially with the... Uh, even that scientist dude that kind of disappeared during the end got slimed and just got preoccupied in the top mm-hmm. that guy i like them because they they were actually doing the, they actually felt like they were doing their jobs and compared to everyone else <laughs> they're like the only ones who take it them and ernie are like the only people really taking this seriously <laughs> i mean ray's kind of but he's more doing it because he likes it mm-hmm. so it's you get that fucking feel of it where he doesn't tell him and pod or ray and podcast i love like paul that. rudd in this too Oh, Paul Rudd just is like a goofy step. Is the yeah. scoop. He did do a good job. He's just so lovable, goofy, almost. The goofy like, stepdad. Like, you just want him. <laughs> like, the kids just don't even really like him, but uh, he's just like the nicest dude, pretty much. I mean, would you like if someone t- talked about that? Like, no, it's always. I took op- your mom to pound t- him. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you Ew. saying this in front of me? Yeah. What was the brother of Phoebe? She was just saying that, and they were just talking about that, and they're like, gross. Ew, stop, yeah. stop, stop, stop talking. I don't blame them there. <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, he was a the goofy, lovable stepdad moment. Yeah. Um, he was pretty wholesome in this. Like. The, the mother f- just felt like we were saying Beth from fucking Rick and Morty moment for yep. some reason. Her dynamic with Finn <laughs> with the brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
with her son. Her and the, her and the son are just the son coming down. I think there's something in the attic, Mom. Well, well you're, you're a grown up. Why don't you go do something about it? <laughs> you're 18. You're an adult. Thought you were a man. Go do something yeah. about it. It's like the only thing. You just put like a wine glass in her hand instead of a I fucking thought she phone. Was. No, it was a phone. But it was a phone. <laughs> yeah, it was her okay. phone. Okay. If she had the wine glass, God, it wouldn't. Like, it was absolutely it, bad. That's what it was in my head. I swear to God. <laughs> I envisioned it. Fucking br- the fucking b- brother, the, the son, just, just going upstairs. I will, I will check it out, and then he gets slimed. He gets absolutely slimed in the fucking attic. He doesn't tell anyone. He's just like, <laughs> "Well, I'm gonna keep this a secret. This is embarrassing." <laughs> br- Goddamn ghost did back shots on. Me. Damn it! <laughs> and then the uh, the new additions, which we touched on slightly, was uh, Kumal Nanjani as Nadim. Nadim. And uh, he ends up. We kind of touch on him slightly, and they were you. You kind of think he's just this nobody throughout it, but then we like find out like he's actually like important. Yeah, you, yeah. When you find he's, out the actual lineage of it, essentially, he's like and harness fireballs. He, they're the descendants of the people called the Firemasters, which, to be honest, lame name, but still, this is like ancient days. So fuck, fuck it. Honestly, <laughs> when you, it's one of those sort of plots when you kind of talk about it, it almost sounds stupid. And like for a Ghostbusters movie, yeah. it sounds stupid. <laughs> just... But it, I, I think he does a really good job in this movie. Like he's one of the most likable characters, and we got like the most laughs. I it's would just say. such a dumbass. Yeah. But it, 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 you know, to be honest, okay, whatever. You're right. <laughs> It's like I just rolled with it, and some I'm I'm the sort of person sometimes like that sort of shit can really piss me off. Like remember in Jurassic World when they like, I can't... oh this girl's part dinosaur. Oh Jesus! Don't bring that up. <laughs> that uh... I was like, oh fuck you! Like, I mean, I get it. To be honest, I think it was funnier just him being like essentially the slacker fucking grandson who didn't know shit, and he's just mm-hmm. like getting caught up in it. Like guys. To me, that was what but, made him kind of like with that plot like work though. Even though, like, like I said, it's one of those plots when you talk about it, it almost sounds stupid or like it wouldn't even fit for a Ghostbusters movie. I did like the in- another- I did like the interview with Bill Murray though, just pissing where Bill's just pissing oh, him off. The, yeah, that was an amazing. That was Puppies, an awesome scene. love them or kill them. And he's just Stop like throwing yeah. pencils at <laughs> yes. me. Yeah, he's like he's asking him such weird questions and like he's just he- the uh, he's just hesitant like uh like he's like thinking is this a tat uh, what. Love him? Yeah. Okay, good good job in the first question. Oh, thank God. He's yeah, just Bill like, Murray is yeah. probably in it the least out of the characters. Yeah, the main cast. The, he's the original at, he's, characters. He's, I think he is uh, definitely, I think, in it less than the other. Yeah. Than, uh, Dan and uh, Ernie. I'd say maybe he has the roles. same amount of screen time as Dickless, maybe. <laughs> maybe a tiny bit more, but I don't know. I think a little probably bit more, but them. that's only because the ending, but he doesn't yeah. say anything much. He doesn't say much even during but the ending. I was saying to my, da- uh, to my dad, I was like, I feel like he was used really well here, mm. where like it was kind of like Chuck Norris in Expendables 2, where it is kind of sort of an extended cameo, <laughs> but you're like, it. you know, they were used pretty well here. Like, this is... Yes, they yes. had a pretty Bill Murray moment. And yeah, yeah, no, I, I liked it. Yeah. He had a little gags, like him just grabbing the alcohol he apparently stored away. <laughs> Anyone need some courage? I'm like, yeah, that sounds like something he would have done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, that sounds about right. And it beats, like, kind of the, I, I rewatched the first one, actually, but a couple days ago, and, like, just, like, some of that shit, like, has not aged well with him, like, because I was just, like, trying to fuck uh, Sigourney Weaver that entire movie. mm and they even imply at one point, like, I don't know what the fuck they're implying, that, like, he possibly, like, had sex with her, like, when she was, a, like, taken over by a ghost. Wait, was it her or was it the other nerdy guy that ended up <laughs> doing the, the, uh... No, they had the implication, because remember, she, he was in the room with her, and then, like, she he basically took, uh, it took her over, and then he was like, yeah. no, 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 I'm not gonna do it, because she was, like, trying to have sex with him. Yeah, yeah, I and know, then she was... And back tra- later in the scene, though... <laughs> And then, like, I don't know, it was, like, him zipping up his pants. It was something like that. And I was like, oh? I don't remember that, but... It was weird. It was something like that. I was like... It's I, been a while like since I've seen the first one, I guess. implication <laughs> here. I thought, because I thought she was, uh, went and did it with, uh, the nerdy guy when she was possessed. No, that did happen. But yeah. Yeah. And, and that I, was off cam. That was off camera, too, though. You know what I yeah. mean? So I felt like it was kind of like that, where, like, it had that scene, it cut to someone else, and that cut back. And it was almost like Bill Murray I mean, doing but something it's like Sigourney that. Sigourney Reaver, man. <laughs> <laughs> But, no, uh, no, stop! I mean, <laughs> I always liked aliens, uh, but um, I guess Bill Murray did too. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, duh. <laughs> Who 
Who but doesn't like the alien? <laughs> he w- there was nothing like that in here, mm. which was is good because he's like fucking seventy at this point. I'm guessing, and we good don't need anything Bill. like that with him. Good job, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, it was good. It was still it was. Just focus more on the moments. comedy with him, which is what he does best. Yeah. No, well, yeah. <laughs> when he's kind of being like Bill, trying to like <laughs> have a love interest or something, I feel like it comes across kind of cringy with some of the Bill Murray movies, <laughs> or especially, like I said, at least with the, the first Ghostbusters. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. <laughs> but um, yeah, and that it's pretty. It, the it was a decent movie. Yeah. Nothing spectacular, but it's like a fun thing that you probably bring the family to if you. Something like that. Exactly. Or people, if like, if you like the original Ghostbusters type thing, probably go check it out. I'd say. I'd say go see it on a big screen too. Like it did look good and like I said, just X today when we saw it. I just hated Phoebe's character. She's such dumb. <laughs> the she, the typical smart one who's supposed to be the smartest one out of everyone, but she acts mm. like such a dumb. It was bitch. just kind of a shame. Jesus. It was just a shame to me because it seemed like it could have just very easily have been written, like yeah. just. I don't know. I think it still would have been the weaker element in the movie, but just in a way where it didn't kind of annoy you almost. It annoyed me. Fuck you. I was yeah. getting... The no, moment she said. The moment she said, I'm going to go and essentially kill myself for two minutes as a, and to become a ghost, <laughs> uh, just so I could figure out and maybe be with you maybe for two minutes, whatever the fuck yeah, she was trying to get hit at. trying to do there. It was weird. I want to do it for yeah, she was trying just to, so I know it's like. She was trying to kiss her there. I kind of got the implication of, but then we were kind of talking about that. I was like, didn't Dan Aykroyd literally fuck a ghost in the first one? Like, I mean, yeah, but <laughs> that was an adult. <laughs> he was an adult and that was an adult ghost. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another kind of fucked up implication that I was trying to hit, that was getting hinted at. Where it's like, even if it was romantic, this is a, uh, Phoebe's 60, actually like 15 years old. kind of like that Rick and Morty. The ghost... Oh. Even though she says you're 16 forever, but I'm like, wait a minute. But how long have you been 16 forever? Because just because you look 16 doesn't mean you're 16 no, still. Weird, right on. Hold up. She's a predator. She's a pedophile. <laughs> just oh, somebody. Oh yeah. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> they did Remember something that? similar to that. And that <laughs> they... chick was like. I don't know, millions of years old or something. It's like, uh, dude, he's in high school. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah. That's one of that's that that's always so weird. Right? That's always so creepy at times too. Where it's like, well, that's why I, did, I said to you, like, there's just weird things like that, and then there's also the question, like, I don't like, want to sound like that asshole, but if she's were, a ghost, then you're a human. I mean, then, if she, they were both adult fucking ghosts, that's one or one's a go, one's an adult. If they were like adult and mm. a ghost, like. Essentially, Dan Aykroyd's character <laughs> was where he's getting into. I just think it should have been that they were perfectly friends. Perfectly sex related. <laughs> they were just friends and said it seemed like this kind of whole, like, will they, won't they plot with it. And it, it was just very generic. And it felt kind really of annoying. Weird, yes. Yeah. It felt weirdly forced. It felt weird. It just. Ugh. And if when you start thinking more into it, it gets more creepy. And I don't really want to think about it. How this, even though she looks like 16, she's probably like fucking 100 years old trying to get with a 16 year old girl. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, it's just gross. Weird, it's just some weird things there that it almost makes. Don't sense think about Hollywood really showing its real colors. They're just, they're just trying to, yeah, like, Fucking Hollywood yeah, moment, every writers or something. <laughs> guys, are you, this is kind of weird, bro? Did you, did you guys think this out? Just someone in the writers. Shit, <laughs> I didn't think of that. Maybe you should have. <laughs> Maybe you should have, bro, bud. Also, her betraying her to see go to the other side, I guess, and you're like. Well, that's eh. one of the other aspects I didn't <clears throat> like about it was it was just like, I hate when they do this where they betray them, but they're like, if it's the romantic aspect, aren't you supposed to love this person, and why would you betray them? I don't know. It just, I mean, like, it makes it not work, and it makes you like, dislike the character. Like I said, it was a very rushed relationship too, yeah. so that's one reason. It's like it felt weird too, like why she would even care at this point. She just met this person, blah blah. Anyway, so uh, but yeah, it was odd, cringe, very cringe uh, story plot right there. Um, like I said, do if you, the more you think about it, the more grosser it feels, and it, I don't want to think about that more. Mm. Uh, moving on to. Uh, <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> it was uh, the director here 
was like a new director to Gil Keenan. Mm. I think he like helped write the last one. Well, but I thought he did a pretty good job here. Like I said, like there was some pretty like awesome action sequences. Yeah. Um, CGI was really good. Cool, cool little lore stuff. Cool little fu- yeah, lore. Cool world like building, world world building. Effects. Yep. The uh, I am more interested. Ernie was definitely one of my more favorite characters in this. Ernie's character again. <laughs> there was a lot of gadgets in this one too. I felt like the yeah. ecto bike and stuff. The, the drone, the the drone the capture one. thing. It was the R R C car one, but I think that was in the last one. No, but the the drone one was new, I believe. It is kind of funny. Like I'm, uh, like I said, my two favorite characters in this were. Ernie and, and uh, Dan Aykroyd's character just because... I really like Dan Aykroyd's plot the most of the OG cast in this one. Mm. Like how he just kind of was not like a dick like some of the other adults and like was trying to help Phoebe. Like that's why I think Phoebe actually, her character did work. Because it was like the first one when she was with Podcaster in that part. Yeah. Like that to me, that sort of stuff worked a little bit better because at least it was kind of continuing like that thread from the last movie stuff too but they barely did that and then went right back to that oh, mm. fucking plot that sucks I was more interested I was about to say she she seemed to shrug off like podcast pretty easily I didn't want like just as friends type thing it's like visits po- sees podcast once refuses to elaborate fuck you podcast it was just for the weird mushroom the marshmallow people pop- popping up again <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it um but like I said the uh Dan and Ernie's character I like because the way they're doing it, they're doing what they always like, but mm-hmm. they're uh, doing it in different ways where Dan Aykroyd's character is more like into it where he, he, he treats it almost like a hobby. He just happens to help out Ernie because he wants to not – well, Ernie's uh, doing it. Well, it seems like one does need the other almost. Of course, yeah. And that's, that's, yeah. And that's kind of their relationship. Ernie's just like saying that Dan – since Dan's kind of out of it in the way where he just does things rather than like – thinking it through sometimes he he's like smart with the ways but it's like ernie's like dan like where they're yelling at each other in the fucking stairway yeah. he's like no dan you brought a, the little girl with the, to do this shit what the fuck's wrong with you we said she's not supposed to do it yeah i told you i want to do it it's just an argument between them yeah. it's in, ernie because ernie knows like if dan keeps like the way he's fucking up is basically is in it's what he did through mm. that by bringing her and doing the shit they did or fucking up the way they did kind of got the firehouse shut down and Ernie's just being pissed off like we needed that exactly. it's got our fucking containment god damn it it's you like those things because you can understand where they're both coming from yeah no and yeah and that's why I said I like the two characters yeah. I like their relationship I, I would have liked to see more of that True. Bill's more of just some guy they call in just once in a while because he's like like, he such a yeah. Well, the, yeah, in the last one, he just shows up. But like to do the test thing, they got him to do that for. True. And I don't. I guess Bill's just but Bill's character is just like I'm good at tests. Of, uh, <laughs> like, remember, like the final fight, and then he just showed up. And yeah. Shot yeah, I know. They were like, <laughs> Hey guys. Oh. Oh, hey Bill. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, Bill. We can't afford any more screen time with you. You were supposed to be here now. Well, I showed up to set today, so I better go fucking check. Damn it. <laughs> I but, just uh, felt like it. I was bored. Felt a little, it. felt a little weird too. The way they just uh, imprisoned the, uh, the end ghost. I like the way they're going. But felt a little weird that they just fixed the containment right after sucking him in. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, that's something well, that's I can where, just ignore. Well, that's where that I plot guess. with her Phoebe and the other ghost felt half baked too, because it seemed like they were touching on something kind of interesting with that plot, uh, with the uh, whole like, is it right that we even imprison some of the, the ghosts? But then I mean, that, they went they nowhere not, with that. They went nowhere with yeah, that. Exactly. That would have been you, But were you, interesting did you think that was slightly interesting? That would have made more like, sense, at least. That's like, what I thought, but they went nowhere with that. If she's act, if this essentially, like, let's say the ghost girl that she likes or something like mm-hmm. that, whatever, whatever, the chick who burned up in the fire. <laughs> it could have uh, been done she, much better. She, it was just so generic. If it, they went with a plot idea of, like, she's essentially a ghost who wants to pass on to the other side, yeah. but then sees other ghosts being essentially in prison, unable to pass on like she can, and she feels more sympathetic towards those ghosts, that makes more sense to me. Or, or yeah, and, like, maybe she, like, helps them realize, like, they can't really, like, imprison them like that in some or, like, sort of get, way, or... I mean, or at least not all of them, been... or they gotta be careful with it. I don't fucking yeah. know, but... Something 
something better, something like that would have probably been better idea than the shitty fucking just, plot they did with the rest with sucks her. Sucks with some of these things when there's like a really interesting idea there, and it seemed like that idea was implanted at some point in the movie, maybe even like in two scenes. Like, don't get me and wrong, they went nowhere with it. Like, don't get me wrong, some of those ghosts definitely need to be in prison. Oh, totally, hundred percent. But yeah. then there was like, it, it brings in that morality sh- issue. It's like, what if they do? Like, if they had like like her, them yeah, like yeah. A regular person ghost like maybe that was possessing like or uh some other object and didn't and that's just how they ended mm. up and then just getting sucked up and essentially through that would have been more interesting plot or Yo. they uh, interesting twist to it and why she releases or helps out this other main ghost because of it for whatever that's reason. what i thought but, but yeah. now they didn't no that, that that's ignored fuck you i kind of forgot about that actually <laughs> well because, because they didn't, didn't go anywhere, anywhere with that. yeah i know it wasted potential wasted right wasted it's unfortunate because this is a, I think, a really strong movie, or we really liked it. Besides that, uh, but it just kind of weighs the movie down, unfortunately. And I think it, it's, uh, I think it's on the higher end of Ghostbusters movies. I think we both said we liked this better than the Afterlife. Uh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. think it was better than Afterlife. Uh, and I think that's because, like, even though there's the nostalgia aspects there, kind of like Afterlife, it goes in more, like more new places with it. Yeah, I guess. Like, with the whole, like, yeah, it was really I, cool seeing that stuff like we talked about. Yeah, I like the way they were doing the stuff. It felt very much. It felt like they were getting a lot of inspiration too from the old cartoons and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. With with a lot of the stuff they were trying to, or like the gadgets and the the labs and the the testing thing. It felt more like that. And like no, a little bit of a homage to that. Uh, not extreme, but the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. The the original, like yeah, the original, original uh, cartoon. cartoon. Yeah, which would be cool. Which great idea if they were doing with if they were trying to. Right. To implement some things like into that. Didn't really include the weird hell realm they have, but you know what? Pickers can't be choosers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, I like this movie. Like I said, uh, I see its flaws, and I know there's some of the critics are bashing it. I think they're being a little too harsh on it, but unfortunately that plot is pretty weak and very generic and very just bleh. And, uh, and like you said, Kind of the more you think about it, kind of the weirder it is and creepier it is. So, yeah, the fe- <laughs> like I said, they and cut the out. The fact that like the parents are kind of okay with it and stuff too. I don't know. Like my it, daughter's it having in weird elements like that, where you're kind of thinking about things like that. And it is a movie, and we're supposed to turn our brains off, but it just you can't help it. Sometimes. Phoebe, are you having relations with the hundred-year-old ghost? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Guys, she's like only twenty years old. <laughs> Baby, that doesn't make it better. It doesn't. It, the, does it a little? Fire, no. One of the firehouse in this one though, and like kind of like cool that I think there was this like thorough like through line of the movie, like with the plot that kind of had a connection to the firehouse and stuff. Yeah. So I really like that aspect of this too, and I think that kind of worked with like, you know, how the old original crew operated out of there, and how the new crew is now operating out of there, like living there too. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of like a cool element. But uh, anything else? You you comments you got for this mm. Ghostbusters experience here? I think that's that rough. We've roughly covered yeah, cool the things I liked and the things I didn't. <laughs> Oh, yes, the popcorn button is actually a metal one, <laughs> which is a, uh, that's a positive. I wish it was made out of fucking the shit in the movie. Brass? Brass. It's a, it's a brass popcorn. You don't know, maybe it's just colored the, the <laughs> so you can't tell it's brass. It's badass. It feels hefty, though. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> just talking about the fucking popcorn bucket. <laughs> It, it's not a Dune popcorn bucket, but you know what? It does the job. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, oh, my God. It's the bucket. Where's the breast? <laughs> but yes, uh, I'd say overall, pretty, uh, at least slightly positive review from us. Yeah. Um. So if, you know, you're bored this weekend, definitely go check it out in theaters if you don't feel like spending 15, 20 bucks. You can wait to see it on Tuesday when it's half price, sir. Or you can just sneak in like you, like most people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't sneak in. They just, they just, no one was there. What am I gonna do? Wait for them? 
Not my fault they fucking they can't do their job. Yeah. Right now that's gonna yeah, we, be. Re- we, we had t- we had tickets. <laughs> we just didn't scan them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. No one scan. Fuck them. Yeah, exactly. But anyway. I guess that's their fault, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's their fault. That's on them. <laughs> But uh, anyway, Ooh, it's on you. It's on me. Don't put that evil on me, Ricky. <laughs> but um. But yeah, so uh, go check it out. Yeah, just uh, uh, tra- ignore the the cringy Phoebe plot line, and it's it's uh, besides that, it's a good movie. Go <laughs> that Decent, very fun movie. You're fun movie. Kind of probably be slightly annoyed by that character and, and by that plot a little bit. Dumb bitch. <laughs> <laughs> kind of has like a Peter Quill moment where she kind of just like. Oh my god. Fuck, fuck that scene. I like Peter, and they had to do him dirty like that, that fucking story. <laughs> what did you do to her? What did you do to her? God damn it, Peter! Ah. <laughs> you Klebok and motherfucker. <laughs> but oh. I think that about wraps it up, Pose. Make sure to uh, follow us on YouTube and Spotify and... Your local oh, social media source. Yes. <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, we're on it all pretty much nowadays. But thank you for tuning in, Pose. And it. we'll see you for the next one. See you. Peace.